All right, let's talk about some more forensic evidence. If you remember, Ashley talked about that so whole story about, um, um, well, Wednesday was the Smirnoff watermelon night. And that's when Stacy tried to poison her with Smirnoff watermelon, allegedly. And then Thursday, we get the even more horrible drink of absolute and orange juice. But you remember? Have you seen any glasses that were brought in here that had any kind of residue from any kind of drugs in them? Because I sure haven't seen them. What about the straw that Ashley so vividly described using to drink that horrible drink? Well, you remember on our case, we called a single detective, Detective Naughton. And when we said, hey, defense calls Detective Naughton, you must have been thinking, why, why are they calling a detective? Because Detective Naughton collected straws from the very room Ashley says her mom gave her that drink and that she used that straw. Where's the DNA testing on the straw? Where's the toxicology on those straws? Where is it? Why isn't it here? Because nobody wants to know. Because the answers might be frightening for the prosecution. And what about DNA on that absolute bottle? And what about DNA on those pill bottles? You heard <coughs> Ms. Hum from the Forensic Science Lab say that, hey, she swabbed the vodka bottle. She swabbed a bunch of things, but never tested them. So they have it. They've collected it. But they've never tested it. If Ashley's DNA was found on the mouth of that vodka bottle, guess what? That would probably go a long way towards telling us what had happened. If Ashley's DNA was found on the mouth of those pill bottles, that would go a long way towards telling us what happened, wouldn't it? But we don't have those tests. Why? Because they're too afraid to look. Because they've already made their decision. Let's talk about this investigation as a whole. From the very beginning, police said, Stacy's guilty. That's it. Let's see if we can prove it. Now, I submit to you, that's not how an investigation gets run. All right? Investigation should be, we take a look at everything. And if we get a lead that points at Stacy, absolutely, go run it down. If we get a lead that says David Castor actually was suicidal, go run it down. If we get a lead that says, hey, Ashley Wallace might have had a problem with David, a reason to kill him, run that down. Did you hear any testimony about any part of this investigation other than they were after Stacy Castor? No. You did hear one thing, though. <coughs> when I asked Detective Spinelli, I said, hey, Detective Spinelli, did you ever hear information from other, you know, the rest of your staff? You know, he was the lead detective. Did, did any of the other detectives tell you, uh, maybe give you a lead that might have pointed at Ashley? And what did he say? Uh, I don't know. He's the lead detective in the biggest case of his life, and he doesn't know. Luckily for us, Detective Lashinsky testified, and what did she tell you? She talked to friends and family of David Castor, and what did she say? She get developed a lead, and one of those leads pointed at Ashley. Did you hear anything about the police talking to Ashley's friends to try to either rule out or include Ashley? No, because they never did it. When I asked Detective Spinelli, hey, Detective, did you know about these big problems Ashley had with David? He says, yeah, I heard about them. I said, what'd you do with that? Who'd you talk to about that? What did he say? He talked to Ashley Wallace. He didn't talk to anyone else about it. They didn't talk to her boyfriends. They didn't talk to her friends. They didn't wiretap her phone. Why? He made up his mind, and he ignores it. Now let's talk about Detective Spinelli. Let's talk about how good his investigation was. He gets up there on that witness stand and has the audacity, the audacity to point a finger at Stacy Castor because, you know, she gives a statement in 2005, a day or two after this incident, and then two years later, some of the details aren't exactly the same as in her written affidavit. And now, typically, I wouldn't accuse a, I wouldn't point at a cop and say, hey, the audacity. My whole family's cops. But I'm pointing the finger at him. Why? Because remember what he told you about that, that one particular thing where, when David fell down? 
on Saturday, and he had a problem because in 2005 in the affidavit, which by the way, Stacy never got a copy of, which he did have, in 2005, Stacy describes it a little bit differently. She has the order of events a little bit off. Now why do I say he's got the audacity to point the finger at her because of that? Remember what happened to him in the grand jury? Remember what he testified? When he was in the grand jury talking about the exact same thing, he screwed it up. And he screwed it up so bad, he told you they had to stop the presentation and he had to go back and get his report. Now, I'll, I'll submit to you this. Do you think that he didn't have his report before he went into the grand jury? Do you think he knew he wasn't, do you think he didn't know he was going to go testify? What, do you think it was like a birthday surprise? Surprise, detective, come into the grand jury. No. He's a trained professional. And this is a couple of months later with written reports. And he's trained, and he can't keep it straight. And he points a finger at Stacy because two years later, with no written report whatsoever, in the context of an interrogation, she mixes up a couple of details. Outrageous. And not only that, Detective Spinelli, I asked him, during the course of hearings in this case, how many times, or I should say, would it surprise you to know that during the course of hearings, when you were asked questions about this case, 32 times, he had to say, I don't know, and go look at his reports. 32 times. And this is a detective who has all the reports. And if you don't think he read them before he came in to testify at that hearing, I don't know what to tell you. So we have a detective who's pointing the finger at Stacy because she can't keep a small detail correct. And yet, he doesn't know anything about this case. I asked him, now you remember, we know that antifreeze bottle they found with David, we know there was a print on it, palm print, but we know it was not Stacy's. We know that, okay? But I asked him a question, hey, do you know whose palm print it was? Do you know, what did he say? Um, do you know whether it was Stacy's? What did he say? I don't know. How can he not know? How can he not know in the biggest murder investigation of his career? Whose fingerprints are on what? How does he not know this? I asked him about, hey, did you test this? Did you examine this? What were the results? I don't know. How can he not know what the results are? He's the lead detective. And we're supposed to trust his word? Oh, and by the way, this same detective who during that huge interview, that interrogation with Stacy, what did he tell you? He didn't take any notes. And we're supposed to trust his recollections? Not only that, but you remember about those phone calls? Hey, when did you make this phone call? Where did you make it from? Do you remember what he said? Mr. Fitzpatrick asked him right away. He said, hey, listen, you know, when you were talking to Stacy about the phone calls and you would said that, you know, I had proof that they were from the business but not from here, he screwed it up. When he was interviewing Stacy, when he was interrogating her, he screwed it up. And so now he's, you can picture it. He's pounding his fist. Ms. Castor, Ms. Castor, I have the records that prove you wrong. And guess what? He screwed it up. He had it wrong. And let's talk a little bit about that interrogation. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Can you imagine? Hour after hour, alone in a room. And this isn't one of those sort of nice, make it pleasant rooms. This is the classic cop interrogation room. Metal desk and chairs, that window. Remember she described the window? Sitting there. And how did she say, describes Detective Spinelli's behavior? Sometimes he would speak quietly. Sometimes he'd shout. He'd talk slow, fast. He'd get close to her. He'd move back. He'd pace. He'd walk all over the place. Now, if you're having trouble picturing it, I'm going to help you out. Do you remember when Stacy was on the witness stand and Mr. Fitzpatrick was asking her questions? Do you remember how that was like, what that was like? Do you remember? That's in a courtroom with a jury, a judge, and a defense attorney. Can you imagine what that was like for Stacy with that detective behind closed doors with nobody? Can you imagine? If it's that bad in front of you, how bad could it be? How bad was it all alone? And remember, we've heard about wiretaps. We've heard about, remember I asked the detective about long range photographs. They put a camera on the telephone pole outside her house. They, they put a wire at the grave site. They were following her around. But you know what they didn't do? 
They didn't record their interrogation. Why not? What don't they want you to see? Because you know this whole question about anti-free and anti-freeze? Guess what? We wouldn't have a question about it if they recorded it, would we? But they didn't. So we don't know what happened. But look at this. Detective Spinelli says, in a nice, calm Detective Spinelli voice, you know, I'm talking to her, I've got this picture, I'm pointing at this, and I'm showing this, and I asked her, you know, what did she pour this? And she said, she poured the antifree. As if that's how she talks. Hey, you know what? Something's wrong with my radiator, I need some more antifree. Now come on. Come on. You heard her on the witness stand. She's very articulate. She's a legal secretary. Do you really think she doesn't know the word antifreeze? And let's talk about that word, <clears throat> how she, why she would say it anyway. I'm sure many of you have heard this game, and you can, you know, maybe if you haven't, you can go home and play with your kids. Milk, 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 what does a cow drink? What does everybody say quick? Milk. But then you think about, wait, no, a cow doesn't drink milk. A cow drinks water. It's a trick. It's a game. An interrogation is a trick. It's a game. That's why they don't record it. He shouts at her. He's yelling at her. He's pointing at a glass of what? Antifreeze. And so what does she say? She says what he's pointing at. Why? Because guess what? Listen, I got to tell you, I'm standing up in front of you folks, and I, I don't know how many times I've done this, but I got to tell you, I'm pretty nervous. Maybe some of you are nervous sitting there. Can you imagine what it's like in an interrogation? How nervous? And the fact that you, 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 you say the wrong thing once, and now you go to prison for the rest of your life? Is that where we are? And, by the, and again, they didn't record it. Why not? Oh, but wait. Detective Brogan testified. She was watching through the glass. Almost forgot. What did she say? Well, she didn't say the same thing Detective Spinelli said, did she? She said that Stacy Hughes said the word anti-free, caught herself caught herself and then continued on. Caught herself. Did Detective Spinelli tell you that she caught herself? No. In fact, he made it very clear that she didn't catch herself. So now we have two detectives. You know, apparently they didn't get together and figure this out. Because one of them says one thing, the other says the other thing. And again, who are we to believe? I don't know. If we had a tape, if it was recorded, we would know, but it wasn't. Once again, a piece of this investigation, a piece of this puzzle is denied you. 